Hey all, here OS Reviews. Just a few months back, we did a review on a mini PC from Mealy called the Quieter 2Q, and I liked it quite a lot because of the sleek, super compact form factor. It's very well built and works well as a fanless mini pocket computer. Well, now the company is back with their latest generation upgrade, which is the Quieter 3Q. It's kind of weird to go from 2Q to 3Q in less than a year, but the past few months have been very busy. For instance, Windows 11 has dropped, so now this is one of their first products that comes with Windows 11 out of the box, and also packs upgraded internals, including a more powerful Celeron N5105. And that's coupled with dual-band Wi-Fi plus Wi-Fi 6 support and Bluetooth 5.2. Definite upgrade versus the 2Q, uh, which was still stuck on AC Wi-Fi and used the older Bluetooth 4.2. Similar to the previous gen, you are able to connect to 4K monitors, Although other things, including the I.O., are still the same as before, again using the same shell that's been recycled, along with having similarly 8GB of RAM. So let me open the box here, which is very compact. We have just a quick start guide on the very top. The mini PC itself, which still has a reminder telling us to only use the included Type-C adapter. There's also a mounting bracket, again if you want to put it onto the back of a display or TV, as well as the aforementioned adapter, which just like the last gen model, the standard 12 volt 2 amps. We also have, again, some other adapter tips for various countries. But the design of the Quieter 3Q, as aforementioned, is almost identical to the 2Q. After all, they have reused the same exact shell, which personally I think, again, still looks very good. Constructed out of this aluminum alloy with some rubber accents, it just feels super solid. That's a pretty big contrast with a lot of the other budget mini PCs that are still using polycarbonate plastic and just feels a bit more hollow and cheap as you're handling it. Now, one of its rivals, is undoubtedly the Morphine M6, also is part of the same generation of Windows 11 mini PCs, uh, though this one is made out of plastic, so it definitely feels not as good in terms of the build as what Mealy has on their products, it's just a bit more substantial. Granted, this one can be configured to become more powerful internally, but at that configuration tier, it will be more expensive than the 3Q. We still have the power key, very sharp edges, and the side here housing three USB Type-A 3.0 ports. The back houses a fourth USB 3.0 port, micro SD card reader, auxiliary port, two full sized HDMI ports, which is awesome to see, and then that Type C port, which is only for power right now. I do wish this could also drive another display or be used for data, but alas, it is not supporting that at the moment. And there's also the Ethernet port if you don't want to use Wi Fi. And then the back here, just again made out of aluminum alloy uh, with some soft touch rubber feet that you can remove if you want to upgrade things like the SSD. It's just very compact. Here it is next to an average six inch phone, so it's not that much larger. This thing really can fit into a pocket or a small bag, and easily you can take this on the road with you. All you need to do is plug it then into a TV or a portable monitor, and you're ready to just get some work done. And indeed, we're greeted to a clean install of Windows 11 Pro Edition out of the box. It takes just under 10 seconds to boot up, very quick. Although I will point out that during the initial setup, I install some security patches, and that process did take me about 15 minutes for it to fully be up and running. And during that period, I did find that it got relatively warm, and that's one thing to keep in mind since it is a fanless machine, thermals will be a little bit hotter. Under normal usage, that is just generally browsing the web and using it for office-related tasks, I was able to get an average of around 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Although if you're doing really graphically demanding tasks like a lot of gaming, as well as when it's installing those really heavy software updates, it can hit north of 105 degrees, which is pretty warm. And technically, Anything above 95 degrees or so, you can get a little bit of thermal throttling, but those cases are pretty rare. Usually if there is a huge update being installed, you generally want to just step away for a few minutes, let it complete, come back, and then performance becomes pretty smooth and responsive again. And now we're looking at a pretty responsive UI, everything opens up fairly quickly, which is expected considering we do get a upgraded Jasper Lake 11th generation processor. We can confirm that it's a fully activated and licensed version of Windows 11 Pro, the Celeron chip here being quad-core. So this variant, for instance, which has the 8 gigs of RAM plus 128 gigs of built-in storage, 
just under 83 gigs are free after the updates are installed, which isn't the most, but overall you can definitely supplement that via a micro SD card. Like I said, a second SSD SATA that you can pop in behind the cover, which is great, uh, or rely on cloud storage. This base model though can be found for only around 240 bucks when on sale. So again, relatively inexpensive. All of these variants though come with the same 8 gigabytes of RAM, which by the way is a single channel RAM instead of being dual channel, which tends to be only found in a lot of these mini PCs that have 16 gigs, unfortunately, but it is what it is for a budget mini PC. Uh, it has been already doing very well. In terms of reception quality, I'm seeing pretty strong Wi-Fi signals thanks to, again, the support for Wi-Fi 6, so you are able to stay connected with ease. Now, if we talk about the benchmarks a little bit more, we can quickly revisit some of the references, such as the Celeron N3450 still is a popular model on many of the lower cost machines, whether it's a mini PC, a Chromebook, or a budget Windows laptop, they often use this chip. Turbo's up to 2.2 gigahertz and is averaging 1,938 on pass mark. Compared to the Celeron J4125, which was used on the predecessor, the Quieter 2Q, uh, which was, again, sold at the same price. Quad-core now goes up to 2.7 gigahertz. Now the CPU's pass mark score is north of 2,900, so definitely seeing an incremental boost there. And now, compared to the newest uh, N5105, we can see clocking up to 2.9 gigahertz. And finally, we have a PC pass mark score of 4,156. So each time we're going up by about 1,000 points from pass mark, which is a pretty noticeable leap. In fact, this might be one of the highest scores I've seen yet out of a Celeron chip. It's even rivaling some of the uh, slightly older generation Intel Core M series chips. Overall, it shows. I would say that general navigation, things like opening up a single program and just operating it, it just seems a little bit snappier. We can try loading up something like The Verge, which is a pretty complex page, and we can see that it just takes pretty much a split second and then almost everything will load here, even the demanding images and ads, video elements, they're all there. Maybe it's still a split second longer compared to more flagship grade processors, like in the same generation, if you're comparing it with some of the Core i series chips, you'll obviously still get better performance there. But really for a budget processor, I think this is much improved. And now we're getting pretty fluid web browsing. I already have about 10 tabs open here, but everything is still catching up. Otherwise, things that many PCs like this are definitely capable of running include office related tasks, when it comes to handling spreadsheets, documents, PowerPoints, and even larger files in general, if they're hitting, uh, let's say, one gigabyte in size, they will still open on here and for the most part presents us with a smooth enough experience for creating calculations, getting some work done, and overall it's still an enjoyable experience for office work, school work alike. Photoshop and image editing, it can handle without any problems at all, even with larger files, with more layers, no issues for this machine. Again, thanks to that 11th generation chipset. With that being said, video editing is one area where, due to the integrated Intel graphics, it still is just okay. You can't really expect it to rival a gaming machine or more powerful hardware in this sense. So it will still be able to splice together video clips, especially if you're just keeping them at HD or Full HD resolution. In my test, I tried to export a five minute Full HD video and it took me about four minutes or so to complete, which is honestly really not bad. In fact, for something which is fanless and so small, I am pretty impressed. The quality also came out just as I wanted. However, for the same task, if you're using a more powerful processor, I have seen to be maybe half the time if you're using something like a Ryzen 7, for instance. So certainly, again, if you're trying to save more time and just do more demanding video edits, particularly if you're looking into 4K resolution content, that's where you may want to upgrade to even more powerful hardware. But this certainly is very good for a basic chipset. Now let's take a closer look at how it handles video playback. It's also no surprise that this new chipset works well, even for watching back videos up to 4K resolution, as you can see there, outputting up to two monitors. I didn't really encounter any hiccups or too much lag. Things still felt pretty responsive in terms of scrolling, as you can see there, which is definitely not what I can say the same for earlier generation Celeron chips would heavily struggle with this type of content. So we can see here that this 4K clip, in fact, I'm not seeing any dropped frames yet, which is very impressive. So streaming back 4K videos from YouTube, Netflix, any source, even locally, you can expect a super smooth experience. Things are loading along quickly. I can scrub between parts of the video. There's not too much buffering going on. And that makes it a pretty good media 
experience, I have to admit. So talking about gaming for a moment, it handles emulation like a champ. For newer games, you would really ideally want to look for titles which are at least maybe three to four years back, and ideally you have to play them at lower graphic settings like just 720p or HD resolution to get you slightly faster frame rates. You have to keep in mind that it is just integrated graphics at the end of the day. Of course, really simple titles like Minecraft, you can still play back at full HD and it works perfectly fine, although the thermals would be a little bit warm still, but nothing too problematic. But if you're talking about the latest AAA games like Cyberpunk, that's not going to fly on something with limited hardware like this, although it does streaming gaming quite well because of the fast Wi-Fi 6 reception and you're able to access things like Stadia or xCloud and you have access to more powerful hardware over the cloud and this just acts as a portal. Just keep in mind some of the memory limitations as well as a, you know, don't treat it like at the fastest computer in the world and I think you should be generally fine on here. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the new Mealy Quieter 3Q. I have to say that I am for the most part impressed. It does really well for actually media consumption, office work, browsing the web, and a touch of light gaming as well and still is built very well in terms of the construction and a tiny shell and you can check out more details if you're interested in the links below for now that's been our video thanks for watching here at os reviews